Hello Lana, welcome to Manifested e-learning platform. My name is FAM Lingwiri, a practitioner within the financial services industry in Kenya. We are learning about equity portfolio management. Focus of today's lesson is equity index weighting schemes. In today's lesson, we are going to learn about the types of indices that exist within the equities market. Thereafter, we are going to analyze the biases of those um, index um, um, weighting schemes. So to jumpstart this topic or this uh, lesson, we are going to look, we are going to analyze the types of indices. Now, types of indices. The first type of in index that exists is price weighted index. Price weighted index. Yeah. Now under the price weighted index, we can say the following. We can say refers, refers to the arithmetic average. Metric average. Arithmetic average of prices of prices in the index in the index price weighted index refers to the arithmetic average of prices in the index build on this explanation and say that adds it adds market prices prices adds market prices of each stock adds market prices of each stock in the index then divides in the index then divides divides the divides the total divides the total by the number of stocks by the number of stocks by the number of stocks number of stocks in the index so we are saying that it adds market prices of each stock in the index then divides the total by the number of stocks in the index. Now, we do not need to do an example of the price weighted index. This has already been covered in um, the new unit that is called Introduction to Finance um, and Investments. And so if you, you want to see how we can be able to compute the price weighted index, please refer to the manifested um, e-learning platform um, unit called um, Introduction to Finance and Investments. Here, we just need to build um, on equity portfolio management um, types of indices, and then we try and assess and analyze the types of biases um, that are there on each index. Number two, number two is market capitalization weighted index. Market capitalization weighted index. This is also called a value-weighted index. Under this price-weighted index, we are only going to consider the prices or the market prices of equity securities. Under this market capitalization-weighted index, we will be able to get the price times the number of shares outstanding. So price times number of shares outstanding, like that gives us market cap or the value of equity security. Now, let's explain what the market cap weighted index MM is all about. You can say it sums, it sums the total market values, total market values, total market values of all the stocks in the index, of all the stocks 
in the index. It adjusts for stock splits. It adjusts for stock splits. We are saying market capitalization weighted index, it sums the total, sums, sums the total market values of all the stocks in the index. It adjusts for stock splits. So the difference between the price weighted index and the market capitalization weighted index, just to, um, to mention in passing, is that the price weighted index only considers, these are the stocks that have actually been listed over here, the market prices, it only considers this column over here, like that, the market prices over there. So we're saying that it is just an average of all the stocks in the index. If the index reaches outside over there, it just sums up all the stocks in this index right over here and then divides by um, the, it, it divides by the total number of stocks in the index. So this, you add up all of this, and then you divide by all of these values in the index. Not on the entire NSC or the entire index or the entire um, um, exchange listed securities. No, we're only saying that if this um, other securities are included in the index, you just add the prices of the securities and divide by the number of, of prices in um, the index right over there. Now, market capitalization weighted index, it includes the number of shares outstanding like that so this is market prices number of shares outstanding right there like that like that i'm assuming these are the number of shares outstanding then you're able to get the market cap like that so you get this times this you get y y y y y y and so on and so forth like that like that so this market cap if the index reaches up to that point over here like that now Price weighted index, the index is up to over here. We're only considering this column over here. Now, market capitalization weighted index, also called value weighted index, factors in these values um, over here. So it sums up all of this like that um, 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 in terms of market values. Or it gets the market values and divides by the total uh, market value of, um, or divides by the total number of securities which have been included in, in, in the index over there. So we are saying that in terms of market cap, the challenge um, is that um, you could be able to have that security um, trying to have a large market cap. Rather, I'm saying this security might have the largest um, market cap over here. Say, for example, in this case in Kenya, um, Safaricom. Safaricom has got largest market cap. If it has the largest market cap, if the stock price of Safaricom goes down, it means it will impact on the overall value of what? Of the index. Yeah. So it influences the index significantly. So that's one of the biases um, that um, we shall be looking at um, um, shortly. So that's the difference between market cap and price weighted um, index. So we can move on to another types of index weighting scheme. Number three, free float adjusted market capitalization index. Free float adjusted market cap weight, um, weighted index. There. Free float adjusted market capitalization and weighted index. We can say the portion of the firm's outstanding shares of the firm's outstanding shares are available, are available are available for purchase outstanding shares are available for 
purchase. It is adjusted. It is adjusted. It is adjusted for the amount of stock. The amount of stock. Um, for, for the amount of stock that is actually is actually available. Available. We can further build on this and say that it assumes it assumes that the investor that the investor that the investor has bought all the available shares has bought all the available shares all the available shares what are we saying about free float adjusted market cap weighted index the portion of the firm's outstanding shares are available for purchase it is adjusted for the amount of stocks or stock that is actually available i'll be able to shortly explain it assumes that the investor has bought all the available shares if there are 100 thousand shares that are available to the investor that are available to investors sorry what we can do is that a portion of this is actually reserved for the founders of that company so let's say maybe 50000 not 50000 maybe say 20000 shares so out of this 20000 shares are available for the founders and that means what it means that only 80000 shares will be released to the public What we are saying is that the portion of the firm's outstanding shares are available for purchase. So this is available for purchase by outside investors. These ones are actually reserved to the founders um, of the company. So we are saying that um, um, this index of free for float market, cap um, market capitalization weighted um, index adjusts for the amounts of stock that is actually um, available. So we are saying that um, um, the free float is just the free amount of free shares that is available um, for, um, for investors. So there is always a bias in this um, free float adjusted market capitalization weighted index in the sense that um, what happens is that um, the, the index might be adjusted or might be biased upwards because of um, this issue of the difference between the number of shares issued to the founders, the number of issues, the number of shares issued to the public, and that um, brings about some um, upward bias towards um, the index. Let's move on this other side. We analyze the fourth type of index, okay. equally weighted index. We say that all stocks, or all stock rather, all stock returns are given, are given the same weight, weight, all stock returns are given the same weight. This implies that this implies that the index is computed as if index is computed as if as if the investor has an equal has an 
equal as an equal investment in each stock equal investment in each stock equal investment in each um, stock in the index in index in the index and you can put a full stop over there we build on this and say that the index must be periodically rebalanced index must therefore be periodically rebalanced must be periodically rebalanced now what are we saying about equally weighted index we're saying that all stock returns are given the same weight and this implies that the index is computed as if the investor has an equal investment in each stock um, in the index. The index must therefore be periodically rebalanced. Now, once we have learned about the types of indices, we can move on to another subsection that talks about the biases of these um, four types of indices. So, biases. Index biases. So, we say that number one, what is the bias of a price weighted index? So price index. Price weighted index. So, we say the major bias is that the price, the securities that have higher prices influence the direction or the movement the movement of index the index the major bias is that securities that have higher prices influence the movement of index of course in a particular direction obviously talk about movement you're meaning or we are referring to movement in terms of direction so if you have security such as X, Y, Z, V, this one has got 20, this one has got 50, this one has got 150, and this one has got maybe say um, um, something like, uh, for example, it has got maybe say um, 20 or, or 19, maybe 10, 10, like that. So these are the index constituent companies, X, Y, Z, V. We're saying that the major bias is that securities that have higher prices, these ones, this one, is the one that is going to dictate the movement of the index. So if this one increases from 150, and they are saying maybe at the end of the month, and month end, we're saying now instead of 20, it goes to um, 17, it goes to 55, and this one goes to maybe say 120, like that, and this one goes, it means around 11, like that. This is the one that's going to dictate the movement like that. So the index is going to move down generally, even if um, this stock moved up. Yes, you can see this one moved up from 50 to 55 at the end of the month. This one, because it has moved down um, to 120, this is the one that is going to dictate the movement of the index. That is the major bias of a um, price-weighted index. Let's move on to the next one. Market capitalization weighted index. Because the market capitalization weighted index talks about the market caps. So number two. Market capitalization 
weighted index. Index. Consistency. Yeah, yeah. So market capitalization, we still have that example over here. X, Y, Z, V. Here the prices are the prices are 20, 50, 150, 10. So we have to get the market cap by multiplying with the number of shares outstanding. Number of shares. This is the market price. Price market prices. So number of shares, maybe it is um, um, 100,000. This is maybe say 200,000. This is maybe say, uh, maybe say 100,000 and so on and so forth. This one is maybe 50,000 like that. So the market cap has to be determined. And how do we get the market cap? Market cap, this times that. So 20 times that is 2 million. This one is 5 times 2 is 10. It's 10 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 1 million. This times that. We're seeing is 150. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can see the impact. Then this one is going to be 10. One, uh, five, 5, sorry, pardon me. 5. One, two, three, four. Five hundred thousand. So we're saying that the, um, the, the, the this market capitalization weighted index is impacted more based on the one that has got higher market cap. You can clearly see Z down over here is the one that has got the highest market cap. Now let's see the impact. Now just the same way as we had done. Um, under the price weighted index, let's see the impact if the prices change um, to the values over there. So, so um, you're seeing that this um, you're getting is 20, and uh, like that, this is 5 times 2 is 10, um, is 10, and then we add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so this one should be 10, like that. 5 times 2 is 10. It should be 10 million. It should be 10 million, pardon me, for that error. Pardon me for that error. It should be 10 million, um, um, like that. So we're saying what? We're saying that the one that has got the highest value over here um, is the one that has uh, the greatest impact um, um, right there. So um, what, 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 what is the bias over here? The bias right over here, clearly you can see, is that if this one moves now to the prices are so end month, end month, end month, end month, in terms of value, value. So we have um, 1755, 120, and 11. That. So this one. So we just multiply, of course, times the, the number of shares outstanding. So this is the one that is changing, the market prices. So the ending value is going to be that price um, right over there. So we are saying we need to have the following. We'll get 17 times 100,000, 1.7 million. So value, 1,700,000, like that. Then the next one we are saying is going to fall to 55. We are saying it's going to be 11 million over here. Like that. And then, of, then this one we are saying is going to be 100,000. And it's going to be times 120. It's going to be um, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then this one. Is going to be um, fifty thousand um, times eleven. Is it eleven? Yes, it's eleven. It's going to be five fifty thousand. That. So what are we saying? 
we are saying that this is the one that has got the greatest value and is the one that is actually going to dictate and the movements um, the movement of um, the index there so the bias we can say the bias is that the value that the, the 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 security that has got the highest value or highest market cap is the one that actually dictates um, the movements of the index right there so we can just indicate that in writing so I write that over here we can say that the major bias bias in this index weighting scheme index weighting scheme is that the, the is that the security with the highest market cap dictates 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 the movement of the index the major bias in this index weighting scheme is that the security with the highest market cap dictates the movement of the index as i have just demonstrated let's move on so that you can be able to see the free float adjusted market capitalization with index the biases free float adjusted market capitalization weighted index Under free float, we are saying that based on the explanation I'd given that you could be able to float 100,000 shares. But in the arrangement, you find that 20,000 are given to the founders and maybe the balance 80,000 is floated to the investors or the available um, investors over here. So what is um, the bias here? The bias is that this um, the index could be adjusted or could be um, could be inclusive of the free float and sometimes um, this 80,000 could even surpass um, the 20,000 and maybe say um, that we're seeing that the, the number of shares that could be um, determined um, could even be slightly more like that, uh, more than the 80,000 that is actually there. So we're saying it could be 80,000 or sometimes it could even be 90,000 which factors in um, the free float especially more so when the founders of um, this um, waiting uh, of, of the index decide to actually um, release some of the shares um, um, to other investors. We are saying that that is um, going to be a significant um, bias um, um, their own. What am I saying? The bias under free float adjusted market capitalization index is that the index which is formulated based on the available shares to the investors could be adjusted upwards, especially more so when the founders actually decide um, to release some of the shares um, to um, the market there. So that is the major in the, the, the major bias we're saying that the major bias of this index weighting scheme is that um, is that the free float shares could increase following the release of shares that had been shelved release of shares that have been shelved by the founders by the founders that's the major bias 
the major bias is of this index weighting scheme is that the free float shares could increase following the release of the shares that had been shelved by the founders. The fourth type is the equally weighted index. Equally weighted index. Under equally weighted index, we had said that all stock returns um, are given the same weighting. And so we're saying that um, small cap stocks are the ones that could be able to have a major impact on the equally weighted index. We're saying the small cap stocks are which ones? So these are securities which are listed on the exchange, those ones. The number of stocks, the number of prices, so prices are indicated right there beside each of those stocks. The number of shares are also indicated. So the market cap is provided. So you get these values over here, X, 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 and so on and so forth, and like that. Once we have this, we are saying we can arrange this market cap in descending order. In descending order. There's a button in Excel that is indicated like that, like that. Sort. Sort. So we arrange it based on descending order. Descending order means that you start from the largest over here, you move down to the smallest. So what happens? So we're saying here you'll have um, the high cap or large cap. Let me say large cap. Cap stocks. And here you'll have small cap stocks. So in an equally weighted index, the weights are assigned, the weights of the, the returns of the securities are assigned equally. And so we are saying that the major bias of equally weighted index is the fact that small cap stocks tend to have more magnitude onto um, the equally weighted index as compared to um, large cap stocks. So we are saying that the index under the equally weighted index um, is computed as if the investor um, um, has an equal investment in each stock. This index must therefore be adjusted periodic periodically for, um, must be rebalanced, must be rebalanced periodically. So these ones are the ones of the stocks which are maybe from right over there are the ones which will have a major impact on the index. And we can say something on that note. So we say that the major bias of this index weighting scheme is that small cap stocks will impact on the index due to the fact that small um, or, or um, stocks with small values that stocks with low prices or low small um, shares outstanding out standing will 
will uh, will impact or, or, or um, not impact will tend to you know magnify will magnify the index returns magnify the index returns so they're saying that the major bias of this index this should be small major bias pardon me major bias of this index the major bias of this index weighting scheme is that small cap stocks will impact on the index due to the fact that stocks with low prices or small shares of outstanding um, will magnify the index returns significantly there and that said this brings us to the end of today's lesson I have an assignment for you. The assignment says, moving over on this other side. Saying that assignment. Explain equity index weighting schemes. Number one, explain the equity index weighting schemes. Um, index equity index weighting schemes. And number two, we say analyze the biases. Analyze the biases of the above in uh, of our above equity index weighting schemes explain the equity index weighting schemes that you know and analyze number 2 the biases of the above equity index weighting schemes. This brings us to the end of today's lecture. Like I've already said, thank you and God bless you.